hello welcome to this lecture we will <coughs> we will discuss bow tie with reference to identification of safety barriers let us see the content first i will discuss the general representation of bow tie then safety barriers after the two different examples one is fall from fixed scaffold and another one is hit by object in EOT crane operation. Particularly the safety barrier and the fall from fixed scaffold, these two uh, things I have taken from this paper written by Papa Juglu and Anajiris, and, and Bellamy, Alley and O. The title of the paper is Quantitative Occupational Risk Model Single Hazard published in reliability engineering and system safety and then the example two where I have, I have created for you. So, I hope that by 30 35 minutes of time we will be able to finish it and it is very interesting one and it will give you uh, the preventive barriers particularly in today's uh, lecture we will be talking about that barrier for prevention. So, now <clears throat> this is an uh, this slide particularly uh, we are we will discuss uh, bow tie the generic concept bow tie generic concept concept so what is this bow tie generic concept there will be a center event or critical event center event or critical event. The center event with reference to fault tree is top event, with reference to event tree it is basically initiating event. Now, I told you earlier that bow tie is combination of fault tree and event tree and here are the generic representation not in terms of gates or in terms of branching we have shown that actually the left hand side is fault tree and right hand side is event tree. So, that means for a center event or top event if you have the fault tree then then from there also you can find, uh, find out uh, ultimately the root causes the root causes and if you develop event tree for that center event or critical event or top event ultimately you will find out the consequences. Okay. So, <clears throat> now this what is the uh, safety barriers? Safety barriers are suppose actually the top event occurs because of many of the basic causes occur simultaneously and uh, in terms of fault tree from the basic event points of view we said that there are a combination of uh, basic events which leads to top event that is the cut sheet. So, you can think in this line that means every cut sheet is the path to the top event or center event. So, that means if, if what is the barrier all those paths can be can be broken there will be some barriers which will break the path. So, that the cuts the basic events or the basic causes uh, cannot occur simultaneously. So, that is why these are barriers safety barriers this is barrier this is another barrier another barrier another barrier these are the safety barriers and what happened even if whatever may be the level of preventive barriers you put there will be a chance of happening of the top event center event or critical event and ultimately your system must also be protected from the impact of such events that is what event tree we have discussed earlier. So, now that means uh, that event tree depending on the system configuration ultimately event trees will be created based on system configuration means how the system behave against the top event or critical event occurring. So, they are also you can minimize the consequence by putting several barriers. 
So, in safety engineering terminology we can say these barriers are that mitigative barriers and these barriers are preventive barriers okay, or these barriers basically recovery barriers. So, that is why this is what is our barrier. So, barrier may be your preventive and may be mitigative or this is basically used for mitigation purpose or recovery barrier. Okay. So, if you know the paths that means, you have an, you have the opportunity to create barriers to generate barriers those are safety barriers which will ultimately help you in improving the safety performance of your system. Now, with, <coughs> with, with, with reference to two examples and then uh, we will we will discuss uh, the, uh, those barriers. Okay. So, what is this? Barriers will be of two types. One will be primary safety barrier, another will be support safety barrier. Now, what is primary safety barrier? Primary safety barrier are, so suppose this is your center event. Now, why this center event taken place? You can, you can dig down with appropriate and and or gate or logic gate, you will find out some of the reasons or the events that ultimately causing the center events. So, similarly, so in so that those events should not occur, so you will you will find out that those events are nothing but failure of some barriers. So, these are primary safety barriers which can be related to the top event with with sound relationships. Now, primary safety barrier again its failure will be influenced by several other barriers which are known as support safety barriers. So, PSB is primary safety barrier, SSB is support safety barrier. So, that is what SSB influence the probability of occurrence of one or more member of the PSVs. So, that means, for a center event, there will be several several PSVs, PSV 1, PSV 2, P 2 PSV Z. So, a set of PSVs, primary safety barrier you will find out, which ultimately prohibit the center event to occur. Then, for every PS primary safety barrier, you may find out a series of support safety barriers. The support safety barriers ultimately what happen? It basically affects the probability of failing the primary safety barriers. Okay. In other word, you can say probability of becoming the safety barrier successful. So, when we use faulty, we basically talk about the failures but in the safety barriers as safety is the positive quantity. So, you can talk about the success. So, for example, if this all the PSBs primary safety barriers are successful, then stop event will not occur or center event will not occur. Similarly, in order to make the primary safety barrier successful, there will be many support safety barriers. We will discuss, but for the time being you understand. Now, again the support safety barriers, these are also barriers. So, they will also be uh, fail or they are successful depending on some conditions and actions. Those conditions and actions of the work environment that influence the failure of those support safety barriers or the PSBs also or some of the PSBs may not be maybe some of the PSBs will be related to this. Mm, this uh, events they are known as proba probability influencing events. Probability influencing events. So, PIEs are probability influencing entities. 
So, they mean the success of support safety barriers, some of the primary safety barriers, this depends on what some conditions of work environment. Okay. So, there will be many critical hidden factors and conditions that ultimately lead to this failure of the support safety barriers or some of the primary safety barriers. So, they are known as PIE probability influencing entity. Suppose this is PIE 1, so this last one will be may be PIE Q. So, there will be a set. So, for every center event there will be, be a, will be a set of for PS set of events for PSB primary safety barriers. Similarly, there will be set of SSB support safety barriers, there will be a set of probability influencing entities. Okay. So, that is what is the concept of safety barriers. So, in nutshell what is safety barrier? Safety barrier will can may be primary safety barrier which is directly related to the top event or the center event whose functionality whose success ultimately helps the center event will not occur. Then support safety barrier which are basically the another kind of barrier which which whose success depends uh, basically makes the primary safety barrier success and there are uh, probability influencing entities which are basically again responsible for the success of the support safety barriers or some of the primary safety barriers. Okay. Now, let us see first example that scaffold example. What is this example? That our if you see all of you know the scaffold when you, if you go to any construction site, you will find out that workers doing construction activities, for example, uh, making a three, three story building, five story building or ultimately you will be finding out that the bridge and many, many there are huge number of uh, such cases where you find out that scaffold is used basically for working at height. Now, we, now, there is a chance of falling from scaffold. So, here we are considering that fall from fixed scaffold. This one, this example I have taken from this paper. So, if you if you go by fall tree method, what you will find out? You will find out that that fall from this may occur if the structural failure is there or the scaffold is unstable or the user is unstable because he has not used proper safety belt or he has given the he has not given proper guarding while working on the scaffold. So, then any of the three will lead to the top event to that is means fall from scaffold. Here these are the, these are the immediate uh, your causes for uh, top event or center event to occur. Here we, we are basically looking into the same thing in the different way. What we are saying that falls from fixed scaffold may be because of the structural integrity. So, primary safety barrier 1 PSB 1 is scaffold structural integrity. Scaffold structure should be properly properly made, properly erected. So, that means, this is the success of the scaffold from structural uh, integrity point of view. So, we will see later on what is that, uh, uh, what do we mean by this structural integrity further. Then scaffold stability that is our PSB 2 primary safety barrier 2 and then scaffold that user stability primary safety barrier 3. So, that means, the immediately you find out that if this safety barrier fails fall from height will take place like fall from cap scaffold. If this safety barrier fails lead to 
fall from fixed scaffold. If this safety barrier fails, fall from fixed scaffold. So, ultimately, but if the success of all these three will ultimately lead to that this center event will not occur. Now, if we want to know that what is that support safety barrier related to PSB 1 that is scaffold structural integrity, then you see it is SSB 1 that means scaffold structure design and construction. Scaffold structure design and now similarly if you if you see the support safety barrier for PSB 2 which is scaffold stability then there are three support safety barriers one is anchoring of scaffold on building or structure if that is successful then foundation base structure is good scaffold protection from heavy object is properly made then scaffold will be stable. So, these are the three support safety barriers for scaffold stability. Now, the third one is user stability. So, you see that what is what are the things for user stability. So, there are six support safety barrier that ultimately lead to user stability. What is this? One is edge project protection because you are working on the scaffold which is at height. Second one is the floor condition. Third one is the user ability to stay on the scaffold. Fourth one is falling object protection. Fifth one is age of worker on scaffold and personal fall arrestor. So, all those things, all those things should be successful. Otherwise, what will happen? User will be unstable. So, see, we are not finding the fault rather we are finding the actions what is to be done because the actions these are all actionable barriers. So, support safety barriers should be there. Okay. Now, then fall from fixed scaffold immediately you find out the three primary safety barriers you find out 10 support safety barriers. So, that is why I say that PSB set PSB set is here PSB 1, PSB 2 and PSB 3 whereas, SSB state set it is 1, 2 like 10 SSBs are there. So, if you do this kind of analysis what happen you know what is to be done. It is basically not only the, not only the finding out the cause but also finding out the action for eliminating the causes to occur. Now, <clears throat> if I say for example, scaffold structure design or construction or if we say basically that foundation based structure or floor condition or user stability on scaffold in terms of SSB, they may not be uh, they, they may require it requires some more things to know. That means, why a floor condition if floor condition is good or bad that SSB 6. So, you find out that there are two probability influencing entities that ultimately governs the success and failure of SSB 6. So, that means, you should not live here, you should dig down further and get some more uh, factors which are basically may be at the at the uh, from the bottom level may be at the sub floor level where actual work is going on at that level minute level it will pinpoint. So, how many such probability initiating entities found? We found out 70. So, there are there is a set of 70 PIEs. This is what is reported in this paper. This paper, if you have uh, subscribing this journal, then you will be able to download this paper. Okay. So, the essentially then what happened you see fall from fixed scaffold 
ultimately it 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 basically is a result of this 3 PSBs, then this 3 PSBs result of 10 SSBs, 10 SSBs which are influenced by 17 probability in influencing entities. So, let us see that what are those P i is. The P i is first one is we say that scaffold structure design and construction. Okay. Scaffold structure design and construction. So, proper design, proper design erection modification of scaffold by competent person. If these two are done by proper design and construction mean you should choose the right kind of material ok. So, that that design specification must be properly laid down load calculation and all those things and then that must be correctly properly erected. So, that mean if these two are not done properly ultimately success of this will be limited. So, that is why they are probability influencing entities. Now, anchoring of scaffold on building structure, adequate stabilizing support and or ties to adjacent structure. So, in this manner, in this manner you can understand that what are the probability influencing entities. Foundation of stru base structure, foundation base structure you see scaffold on the level or firm foundation, no unstable objects used to support scaffold this is required. So, that means, when actually the erection will take place before that you must see this. So, that is why these are the actions. So, actionable, actionable barriers, actionable entities you are finding out. You are not only finding out the causes, but faults that through fault tree you can find out. Fault tree give you enough idea of what is to be done but that is what is to be done you are you are doing through safety barriers. Scaffold protection from heavy objects, potential of being collided with or hit by lorries, vehicles, cranes and other vehicles that you have to understand and accordingly protection. Edge protection, adequate edge protection throughout the use of the scaffold, regular inspection, edge protection absent. So, these are the these are the basically probability initiating entities which ultimately governs the what it happens it governs the success of the support safety barriers. So, if you if you do more brainstorming you may find out that some of this may be also directly related to the PSBs, but but at at at, at present what we found that this is a reasonable one uh, to believe that yes these are the these are the PIEs for the support safety barriers and these are the support safety barriers which ultimately influence the uh, PSBs and if we take care of the PSBs and SSBs with the help of this PIEs also then obviously uh, the pre prevention part prevention through design uh, that may be um, may be achieved. Then you see that there are few more like your floor condition there are two PIEs, user ability to stay on scaffold three PIEs, then falling object one, age of worker that how many workers are more than 50 percent uh, 50 years old. So, fall arrestor whether fall arrestor safety needs these things are used or not. Okay. So, these, these things ultimately uh, helps you. And, and you will understand that yes my design is good or bad. So, essentially the center center event is very important, primary safety barriers very important, support safety barriers identification is extremely important and after that PIE is required because otherwise you will not be able to quantify the the success or failure probabilities of SSBs and PSBs and essentially the uh, the center event. 
Okay. So, these are the uh, this is the concept and this example through this example now you understand that what is safety barrier in terms of uh, bow tie how bow tie will help you in identifying the safety barriers primary sep support safety barrier primary sub safety barrier support safety barrier probability influencing entity. Just to reinforce the idea further we will see another example which we have taken from a manufacturing industry. So, what is this? We are considering about electric overhead traveling cranes and you know this is a crane which basically used heavily in manufacturing industries quite large in numbers. The purpose is that handling material of specific capacity within a specified area. So, the crane actually operated through through electrical power that is why electric overhead cranes. Now, you all know if you have seen by chance or based on your work experience if you have seen the traveling uh, that, uh, that EOT crane then you will find out the main traveling structure will, will be will be the bridge and that spans along the width of the bay and travels in a direction parallel to the runway. And the hoisting units having motor drive, coupling, brakes, gears and so many things. Now, <coughs> something like this, so that this, this is basically suppose the, the railings on which the crane will move and suppose this is the bridge ok. So, there will be hook then ceilings down to the load and ultimately movement will be how to longitudinal this direction and this direction this side that side then to longitudinal movement to cross travel movement and lower hoisting and lowering movement. So, six types of movement are involved in the in EOT crane and crane operator controls all movement. So, there will be supervisors who will basically provide the instruction during crane operation movement. There will be riggers who actually attach the load to the hoisting rope and both the supervisor and the riggers they play important role along with the operator particularly both from the production or uh, that material transfer point of view as well as from safety point of view. So, as the we are in interested here in the safety engineering. So, if you if you study the crane accident you will find out that the there are various causes which are basically causing the crane accident to happen. For example, crane boom or crane contact with energized power lines, movement below the crane hook, overturned crane, hit by objects, fall of objects, fall from height, structural collapse, rigging failures, improper maintenance of crane, unskilled operator, so many, so many causes are there. Okay. So, <coughs> next I will show you uh, based on uh, around approx 3 years data from a plant, we found out that uh, what are the crane accidents type what type of crane accidents are taking place. So, then you see that this is basically um, almost around 3 years data of crane accident from a manufacturing plant and we found out that there are 26 different categories of crane incidents which we are uh, prime which are defined as prime causes, but actually what are those they are basically the that most of them are basically the center events. For example, hit by object, slip trip and fall, electrical fall, fall of object, fall from height. Okay. So, this data set if you see that it is basically little bit of uh, mixing some are uh, your center event, some are basically related to the PSB's failure, but essentially what happened and they are they are this particular company they are thinking that they all are basically the primary causes 
and that is relating to the aortic crane accidents and the so if we go by this uh, by this data and assume that okay data is collected properly and the uh, the different causes are given uh, given in with proper meaning so then definitely hit by object is having the maximum share so that means this is a center event which is basically having the which is accounted for the maximum number of crane accident for the plant studied followed by follow up object so we will not develop the safety barriers for all those uh, important center events so that's why what is required you required to have a pareto chart kind of plot where the 80% of the maybe the accidents will be related to a but few uh, number of uh, that uh, center events so here we found out that this first six uh, they are causing 80% of the accidents crane related accidents and the first one hit by object that share is 23.3 percent. So, we will discuss that hit by object uh, PSB and SSB and PIE that means safety barriers for hit by object. Let us see what is this. So, our center event is hit by object in EOT crane operation. So, what are the PSB? PSB 1 is that is functional and operational. I think I will do use this functional and operational integrity. And then what is the PSB 2? PSB 2 is operator's integrity. Uh, here by operator's integrity, we, we, we will basically talking about the operator supervisor and the regards also then workplace integrity the facility given for crane operation that integrity then mechanical integrity with reference to the load hook and all those things so all those integrities are very very important psb3 and psb4 so these four if it is successful then this will not occur now again first PSB 1 that is the functional and operational integrity it has we have identified 5 support safety barriers. For the second one operators integrity there are 4 support safety barriers workplace integrity we have written found out 1 and mechanical integrity another 3 and ultimately when you have gone for the PIEs that means probability in its influencing entities we found out 32 probability influencing entities. So, that means for a particular center event, center event is 1, it has 4 PSBs, then 4 PSBs, 13 SSBs, then from there 32 PIEs you see. So, you have now actionable uh, I think uh, information 32 PIEs take action. So, if you see what are the SSBs proper hoisting mechanism adequate crane hook movement proper braking system correct path planning proper rigging competency of operator conflict resolution age of crane operator personal protection substandard workplace condition design of beauty crane quality of materials electrical safety so these are all case specific so maybe if you see UT crane in some other operation then or in some other plant you may find out something more but more or less these things you will get because our data set is it's a good amount of data we have considered so, then what you will be interested to know now that what are the PIEs related to proper hoisting mechanism. So, let us see what are those you see proper hoisting mechanism the PIEs are evidence of jerk you have to understand why jerk is there and it should not happen whether that, that facility is there or not adequate space for movement 
regular inspection of hoisting rope, use of guy rope, proper check or, or of fastener or fastening. So, in this manner, in this manner for adequate crane hook movement, avoidance of jamming, avoiding workers presence during hook movement, for braking system, regular inspection, then functional limit switch, for avoidance of uh, collision, correct path planning. So, um, I will correct it actually we have written under SSB this correct path planning later I have changed it to avoidance of collision with objects that is our SSB and correct path planning is the PIE. Then proper rigging, proper rigging inspection of attachment of objects, minimum swing angle while rigging, absence of riggers, so many PIE, PIE are there and if you if you see that see uh, that ultimately SSB, SSB what is this SSB 5? SSB 5 is proper rigging. So, it, it, it basically influencing the functional and operational integrity as well as the operator integrity because the rigor competency is important. Rigor the whatever way he will ultimately uh, that uh, the rigging is also depends on the skill and competence of the operator. So, so <coughs> fine. So, you got this proper ring and these are the PIEs. Now, similarly, if you see SI 6, SSB 6, not SI, SSB 6 competency of operator, what are those PIEs? Probability influencing impetition, avoidance of oblique pulling, situational awareness, proper training proper positioning, control over LT, control over speed. So, all those competencies that must be uh, with the operator, okay. with the help of work uh, that uh, supervisor and the riggers, he will ultimately uh, make the transfer possible. So, that is very important. Now, conflict resolution, follow supervisor instruction, follow SOP. Age of, age of crane operator. So, how many old people are there? Because old people the flexibility will be less. So, it will it may leads to uh, the problem in terms of safety, but at the same time old people will be experienced one also. So, that may help. So, that means ultimately uh, ultimately it is a it is a different ball game because sometimes it is useful some cases it will help some cases it may not help. Where the experience counts this is better where the flexibility counts this is bad. Then personal protection use of PPEs, personal protective equipment. Okay. So, this is another example with reference to PSP. Mm, then how many substandard workplace condition, design of UT crane, cabin facility, quality of materials, electrical safety. So, we have identified PI. Nutshell, what I mean to say that you have to identify what you have to do for safety barrier analysis. You have to do these things first. First, you must know the system for which you are going to do this. Then, you basically have either design, you have design knowledge, hazard knowledge, and your lesson uh, historical records or lessons learned by which you know the center events. Once you know the center events, you, you know the fault tree side as well as the event tree side. So, here I have shown you in terms of fault tree side, but in terms of event tree side also you have to see. So, what happened either in the fault tree or event tree, then for this center events based on your de design knowledge and hazard knowledge, you will be able to find out primary safety barriers, it will be a number of number of barriers may be one may be more may be many more then for for every PS, psb you find out ssb support safety barrier it will be also quite a huge then for every ssb you find out pies and then then you will find out that for every center event there will be there will be a large number of pies 
So, what is required then? That means, will you address all the PIEs or will you will you address I mean, go for all SSB and should be there or will there be all PSBs? How do you do it? So, that means, you, this identification is fantastic, but identification alone will not help you in taking actions you require quantif to quantify it. That quantification will help you how many PIs, PIEs you should consider or what is the first PIE that should be taken into consideration or where, where your effort put in preventing the, the center event to occur will be maximized or where for which PIEs you will be you will be maintaining the status quo. So, all those things will come under safety barrier analysis. So, that means, what we have done you have learned today you have learned bow tie that revisit then you have learned the safety barriers in terms of three important concepts and you finally, have you are you, you are able to when you have you got the methodology how to identify the PSB, SSB and PIEs and 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 then what I what we say that we see that you have seen the two different examples and these two examples will be useful enough for you to develop the safety barriers for your own system, but this is not sufficient you have to go for safety barrier analysis. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.